Yeah. Well, read it. Eleventh oh. of May, twenty twenty-three. John and Trevor coming to you from Norwich, UK, in the middle of a, a huge thunderstorm. We're in a petrol station under cover. Um, there might be a flash of lightning. Oh, and a, a peal of thunder just right on cue there. So this morning in our travels, there's been a a sense of busyness that people have been too busy that people have been too busy and that, that's the theme today so Trevor is going to read that passage about Martha and Mary so over to you Trevor and this is from uh, Luke, the Gospel of Luke chapter 10 verse 38 at the home Jesus at the home of Martha and Mary as Jesus and his disciples were on their way he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha, her sister, was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. Distracted. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work for, by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Amen. Amen. Now, this is, we know, a very well-known story. Um, the point is busyness. Martha was busy in the kitchen. Mary was busy listening to Jesus. And the principle here is a clear and obvious one. When Jesus, the Lord, when God comes into your presence, then it's for us to drop everything and be like Mary rather than Martha. And of course, I can hear all the Marthas saying that God has called them to be in the kitchen, to be busy, to be doing doing, 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 doing. But of course, we are the beloved and we're called to be loved. To be rather than to do. Of course, there are some practical things to be done, but everything has to be in obedience to God. And that is the priority. Mary was submitting to the spirit of the living God coming into her home, her life, personally. And she sat at the feet of her personal saviour, Lord, Master and Teacher. And Martha chose to be in the kitchen preparing things, presumably to feed them and to give them refreshment. And she chose to do that. And the problem wasn't her choice to serve God in that way. Of course, the problem was her attitude to her sister and her attitude to Jesus Christ himself. Lord, tell my sister to help me. And of course, Jesus' tone with Martha was very tender, very loving, very patient, gracious, kind, compassionate, and understanding. And Jesus understood the root of Martha's busyness. She was worried about so many things, the things of life worrying her. And she busied herself because she was worried. And she didn't want to think about all the things that were on her mind. But of course, Mary chose the better thing. And Jesus kindly, gently corrected Martha, chastised her in a gentle way. Martha, 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 you are worried about so many things. Your sister has chosen the better thing. This will not be taken away from her. And of course, my mind, your mind go, might go back to Abel and Cain. 
two were worshipping God. One, the way God wanted him to worship him. The other one, the way he thought he wanted to worship God. And he became angry because his worship wasn't accepted. So God is looking for obedience. Who can I send? Here I am, said Isaiah. Send me. Trevor and I have been talking about people who go to church. They might call themselves servants. They might call their church a servant's church, implying it's only for servants. And of course, brackets, servants of the Lord Jesus Christ, close brackets. That's the inference. It's a Christian church. Another church might call themselves living stones meaning it's only a church for living stones. Not dead stones, in brackets. Other churches might call themselves an army. The Salvation Army. The Jesus Army. The King's Army. The Lord's Army. And of course that applies that God is the general commander-in-chief and people who go to that type of church identify themselves with being soldiers. So where I am today is I'm focusing on the word disciples. When Jesus said to his disciples to go into all the world and make disciples, preach the gospel, cast out demons, heal the sick, raise the dead, Signs and wonders will follow the preaching of the true gospel, of the true Christ. Make disciples. Well, who is the discipler? Surely not a man. Well, who's going to disciple you? Which man is going to disciple you? Which woman is going to disciple you? Which couple is going to disciple you? And who's going to disciple them? The disciples. And who's going to disciple the disciples who are discipling you? How is it all going to work? God has given us the Holy Spirit. He, the Holy Spirit, is within us, assuming you're born again. Assuming you're baptized with the Holy Spirit and you have received the real true, genuine Holy Spirit. The genuine Jesus Christ, the way to the genuine Father overall. Now I'm assuming that that's you. You're born of God. You have a testimony. Once I was lost, now I am found. And that makes you a sheep who hears the voice of Jesus Christ. You hear what the Spirit is saying. You have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying, eyes to see what God is doing, and you can even see what the Father is doing in Christ, in the Holy Spirit, today. Jesus speaks to his sheep. My sheep hear my voice. The voice of Jesus Christ. And of course, you might say, the Bible speaks to me. Well, of course, the Bible is only a book. It contains words, printed words. But the Bible isn't your leader, your teacher, your saviour. Jesus Christ, he is the living word himself. Of course, the Bible is relevant. Of course, the Scriptures are Holy Spirit breathed scriptures, useful for teaching, correction, admonition, encouragement, warning, even rebuke. But be very careful when you are quoting the Bible to people because the devil quotes the Bible only to manipulate, dominate, intimidate, and control. Now, Jesus didn't control 
the people in the house of Lazarus, Martha, and Mary. Jesus didn't control them. He walked in, the Spirit of God came in, God sat down and saw how things were. Mary knew her place to sit at the feet of Christ. Martha chose her place to be busy, ready for Jesus when he came, but to be busy. So the theme today is busyness. People are too busy to even notice what life is about. In the library, there was a section there, uh, simple books for busy people. Small books, little books, thin books for busy people. And this is the sign of the times. Even in the library, people generally are too busy to read. And they use the library for the internet in the UK, or they have groups that come in, they have a social club, a community club with teas and coffees. They have a song group in this particular library. They come sing songs. And everybody is busy, including me, when I went in this morning. And, and Trevor waited patiently and Trevor busied himself with reading the Bible. Why not? Use the time wisely. And that's when I noticed this shelf, small books for busy people. And it's a sign of these times. Now the word busy is in business, busyness. The church can be very, very busy doing its busyness and they actually miss Jesus coming. And I'm, I'm not talking about the second coming. I'm talking about when Jesus comes in his people into that religious place of worship, will they even know that the Spirit of God is in the house? In the spiritual house of the people, the born again ecclesia, the disciples of Christ not just followers of Christ and his teaching, Christ's philosophy and quotes, doing good works because Jesus did it, looking after widows and orphans, setting up a charity to look after people, and the whole purpose is to get money. The whole purpose becomes get money so that we can be charitable and the ends justify the means. So we start to be in business in the churches, running churches as businesses, to get money in so that we can do good works. As if God ever said that's what to do. So the loaves and fishes. God did a miracle. He multiplied an offering. The little boy offered his loaves and fishes Jesus blessed the food, broke the food up, gave it to the disciples, 5,000 people, include, and plus women and children, were fed that day. Today's equivalent value, 50,000 pounds. But no money changed hands. And when the baskets were sent around to collect the leftovers, it wasn't a basket looking for offerings of people paying money for their free meal. Jesus wasn't looking for a donation, PayPal's, subscribers to give him money. Jesus' ministry was a gift. Christ was the gift. The Holy Spirit is the gift. Jesus is the gift today that keeps giving. He keeps giving me encouragement. He keeps me going, encouraging me to continue to persevere and to put this video out to those with ears to hear. And even any viewers, subscribers, listeners, viewers in Norwich, UK, it's for you to listen and test and weigh these things and see if this is what God is telling you. Or is it just for me? The workplace. 
of course we're talking about the way of the world is you're educated in a worldly school or even a Christian school to get your exams so you get a good job and you are taught what the world wants you to be so they can employ you and then you obey the manager the boss and you get money and you put it into your pension fund and, and so forth and that is the way of the world but of course we're talking about 2023 but when you come to understand that we're not working for the worldly employer that we are obeying God to be in a workplace situation whether it's a Christian context charity context religious context or absolute worldly context all of us must obey God all of us and God told me to to work for Norwich Union but not to preach the gospel there and to suffer the spirit of the world in a workplace situation and to do a functional job and obedience is better than sacrifice and of course it added to a pension for such a time as this today and then I I went for a job at Norfolk County Council and it was more fitting for me I thought with my skills of marketing and advertising but of course there I was kept in a very small box on a treadmill working nine to five whatever and again it, the money wasn't brilliant it added to the pension for such a time as this so it's easy for me to say that being alive is not about earning money if we're following Christ the reward comes to those who are true genuine servants disciples, ambassadors for King Jesus. But we're not working for money. We're not even working for God because God is not the employer. God is the king, the king above all kings, the God above all gods, the commander above all commanders. We are continuing to go forward as the body of Christ and of course there are many members of the body of Christ who are in a sense imprisoned in a worldly work situation or religious situation or a charity situation and they feel and think they have to continue to do the job because they cannot work out how they will continue to exist without their job and brackets, where is the money coming from? When Jesus comes, the challenge is, are we going to be too busy to even notice Christ has come? Christ is in us, and we are in Christ. Wherever we go, are we in the Holy Spirit or in the spirit of this world? And, the, and the, the point is we have to be 100% submitted to God. And again, it's easy for me to say this because I'm retired. I'm not working for the world. I'm not working in the world. I'm not rewarded by the world. The pension comes in because that was the deal. You work hard, you, you put your money into the national insurance scheme, and your pension scheme and at this stage you get to live off your pension that is the system but I'm not working for the system our submission is to God Jesus the King the Savior the master the teacher and things in the world are changing Economics is changing. Money supply is changing. They're talking about digital currency. And they're talking about compliance to the things of this world, the laws of this world, the, the precepts of this world, the statutes of this world. 
And what will we do if a government says that we have to have the barcode, that all the banks will be closed and it'll just be di digital currency working through the smartphone? What will we do? How will we cope? These thoughts are already out there. They've been out there for 30, 40 years. Barry Smith from New Zealand was talking about all of this in the 90s. Don't take the mark of the beast and whatever that means. So we're not going to keep speculating about the future. We are called to take one day of salvation at a time and to obey God today. And, and yesterday, uh, I produced a video, I haven't uploaded it yet. We take one day, to, one day of salvation at a time, one hour of salvation at a time, one minute of salvation at a time. Who knows when Christ is coming? We don't know the date or the hour or the minute or even the second when Christ is here. So today, I encourage you again, read the four Gospels, look at the parable for the ten virgins and make a decision. Are you ready? Are you ready to go? Do you want to go? Or are things of this world holding on to you so much that you're actually hoping and praying Jesus doesn't come? For whatever reason, things of this world, emotional dependency, children, grandchildren, ambition, building your new churches, your new monuments to your Christianity, like a tombstone. Once upon a time, there was this person and this building is dedicated to this person, like a memorial. Or are you focusing, like Mary was focusing, on listening to what the Spirit was saying through her Master, Jesus Christ? And when she worshipped him at his feet, yeah. and she gave an expensive gift to the feet of God, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. <coughs> Mary's ex uh, worship was acceptable. A Abel's worship was acceptable. Obedience is better than sacrifice. To obey God is to better than to do for God what you think or feel God wants you to do. Faith and works. It is crucial to submit one to another, to check out everything you're doing. New wineskins every day for new wine every day. Old wineskins are set hard like concrete. So God bless you, brethren of the one God. Keep going forward. Don't look back like Lot's wife and be lost. And the Lord has told me not to look back at people who are looking back to see what Lot's wife is doing. That's not for us. Plow on, don't look back. Luke 9, 62. So, God bless you from me, Trevor. God bless you from Trevor. Have a good day and remember, uh, we are his workmanship. If you are in Christ, we are his workmanship and he is working in us towards his plan. So keep close to him, abide in Christ, and bear much fruit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. And that's from Ephesians, you can look that one up. Workmanship. God bless you, speak again by the will of God. God bless. <laughs>